Back on the conversation, Erica Smith joining us. She's a US Senate candidate in North Carolina, she's progressive. And she has a quote against her from a Democratic consultant that is one of the most outrageous quotes I've ever seen. So I, on that alone, I wanna to talk to Erica again. But we're gonna talk about some things before we get there. Erica, welcome back. Glad to be back with the TYT family. Good to see you again, Jake. All right, good to see you. So um, last we talked, uh, you know, you had run for the state for your for the U.S. Senate seat before, and uh, the National Democrats had supported uh, a more of a conservative Democrat uh, in, in that race. He went on to lose yeah. the general election. By the way, I could be saying that about almost any state right now. Ohio, Nebraska, Missouri, Indiana, you Kentucky, name it. Kentucky, Kentucky, Texas, Kentucky, yes. Exactly, right? So it's that same playbook, make sure the progressive doesn't win. Let's get a conservative Democrat who's gonna lose in the general election. They run it every time, it's it's madness, right? So it's I, insanity. I've been doing it over and over again. Expecting a different yeah. result, we've heard that before somewhere, right? So now, Erica, I just want the audience to understand. It's not like they think, and this is gonna be a prelude to the crazy quote. Um, it, it's not like they think, oh, uh, well, you know, it's not, we're not worried about Erica Smith being too progressive. Uh, we're worried she's not qualified enough because you were a state senator, an engineer, a teacher, and a minister. Uh, so uh, one question is, is there a job you haven't had? <laughs> and then, but but in all seriousness, if and when you ever talk to Democratic leaders, whether it's in your state or at the national level, what argument do they make to you? Because they can't possibly say that you're not qualified. So why do they say that they're they, they're supporting other candidates when they do? And it's not that I'm not qualified, I'm overly qualified and I'm highly, highly competent and that's what they fear. Um, I have I'm someone who brings a broad background. I have the business acumen, the intellect to be able to articulate on the issues and re-engineer the criteria to make them work just as well in the rural center as they do in the urban center. And so there is no excuse. Every poll showed them last time that I was leading. I was the front runner beating the incumbent by double digits and by wider margins than the moderate centrist Democrat that they went with. But we're really, really excited about who we're bringing to the table. We're fighting for the people of North Carolina. We've never been the establishment candidate. We are the constituents candidate and that's what matters. Yeah, so that brings me to this quote that uh, drove me crazy. So a Democratic political consultant named Thomas Mills uh, said that uh, about you, quote, you know, at some point that becomes on her, uh, meaning, and when they, he was asked about your fundraising, that uh, two other candidates are out raising. You raise a good amount of money, uh, you're in the six digits, and and so you've got good grassroots fundraising, etc. So you're on the board for sure, right? But they come in with giant lobbyist money. So he says, you know, at some point that becomes on her because the network they bring in is generally a reflection of their experience and their work. Is that your experience in politics? I mean, you're a state senator. Uh, this he says, well, if you raise a ton of money from lobbyists, uh, that that is a good reflection on you. Um, has that been your experience? No, it is, it's quite the opposite. That, is, that does not speak to who you're going to represent when you're elected to that office. We have enough people in Washington, D.C. who are working for corporations, working for lobbyists. And I am going to work for the people who send me there. And that's the people of North Carolina, that's the voters. We have too much of that going on in Washington, D.C. And that's why we cannot deliver on bold, progressive um, and create policies that are going to create structural will change for folks um, who are struggling every day all across this state, all across this nation. And so I, I am disappointed in that quote. Um, we raised more in two, three and a half weeks from our launch in early March than we raised the entire election cycle um, the last time around. We certainly raised more money than Cal Cunningham raised 
at this point in order for them to get them um, out of DC and backing his campaign. And it was a failed campaign. We've seen time and time again, we've had candidates, moderate Democrats who raised millions upon millions of dollars. But that does not equate to a victory in November. But it does equate to more money <laughs> for Democratic consultants. Um, and that's why this guy's focused on what he called a network of friends and donors. Um, and Erica, you know, isn't that really the issue with the Democratic establishment, whether it's in North Carolina, your state, or anywhere else? I mean, you're for Medicare for All, Green New Deal, canceling student loan debt, and you focus on, quote, extreme income inequality. Um, Absolutely. But the Democratic consultants and lobbyists, for them, that's not really the bug, that's kind of the feature. Uh, is that the issue here in the split in the Democratic Party between progressives and establishment? That is their hyper focus. Um, that is the consultant's hyper focus. But as we've seen time and time again, that doesn't work. There is a new face of electability in the South, as we've seen with so many inspirational candidates who are progressive, who are like me, um, who are funded by the people, a completely people powered grassroots movement. That's what this is about. And so as soon as they get on board, then we will see victory. Uh, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. As you know, my favorite scientist Einstein said that that is insanity. But that is what we're seeing, but it's a failed um, it's a failed plan and it's dead on arrival. So we're not focused on the corporate dollars, the lobbyist dollars. We've sworn off um, corporate PAC money. We don't take any money from fossil fuel industry. And so we are committed to doing this the right way, the way it should be done. So I'm gonna get to a dollar per door, but can you give folks your website here so they know how to support you? Yes. Yes, please go to my website. It's ericaforus.com. I'm one of us for all of us. I'm one of us who's gonna fight for us in Washington, DC. www.ericaforus, E R I C A F O R U S dot com. All right, I do that because when people are running without corporate PAC money, they they can't win without you. So you've got to help in whatever way you can if you're progressive and that's your inclination. All right, so you're running an interesting campaign, a dollar, one dollar for one door, what does that mean? Okay, what that means is that uh, we're inviting people to join this initiative and we are traveling all over the state of North Carolina. And what we have found on the ground is that people want someone who's gonna bridge and build a diverse working class coalition and bring us together. So for every dollar that's donated to this campaign, we will knock on one door. So $1 will knock on one door, $5, five doors, $20, 20 doors in a county in North Carolina that Trump won in 2020. 2020. And so what we are sharing and what this initiative is about is we're inviting everyone to directly help us bring about the change that we need to see in this country. Well, you know, you once said that you know the value of a dollar because your parents struggled to hold on to the family <laughs> yes. farm. So uh, by the way, I added the whole, you know, you got the engineer and the minister and the CEO. I mean, did you do any farming? <laughs> Were you also a farmer? <laughs> you know, that's what motivated me, Jake. There's, there's never um, any hard work like farming. We harvested cucumbers, corn, um, soybeans, cotton, peanuts. And so I would have to get up from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. We would get up at 5, 5.30. We would help my family um, harvest our produce. We would take it to the farmer's market and then we would divide that um, among our family. And one thing that that taught me was to harness the available resources. But as well, Jake, you never left anybody in the field by themselves. It's about looking after your neighbor. And this is what our diverse working class coalition is about. It's making government work for all of us, not just the wealthy, not just the well connected. I know the value of a dollar because I grew up in poverty. Um, I, I grew up in a family with six children. My dad was in the United States Air Force. We called my mom the domestic engineer who was a teacher and, a, and an office manager um, and who went back to work after raising six children, five girls and one boy. And so um, they made sure that we all got a quality education. And I was you know, very fortunate to be a mechanical engineer. I used to work for Boeing in Seattle, Washington, but North Carolina is home for me. It was where I was born on 
a military base. And it's where I've spent the last 20, 25 years um, building community, building capacity, and making sure that the we close the rural urban divide. Erica for us.com. All right, one more question at least. Um, look, when, when I see you, I see one of us. Um, and yes. uh, unfortunately, when the uh, Democratic establishment and, and oftentimes the establishment media sees you, they see you in a different light. Uh, so I want to talk to you about, uh, for example, what you did at Boeing. So it says that you fought to standardize the pay scale. So yes. that you. Now, I hesitate in saying this because the, the press is so against progressives that they'll paint this in a negative light. But to me, it sounded like you were doing, you were creating some good trouble at Boeing. Well, absolutely. Not only at Boeing, but every profession that I have worked in, I've fought for equal pay for equal work. As a black woman engineer, I wasn't earning what white male counterparts were earning. Black women still today only earn 62 cents on the dollar of a white male, and that's unfair. And so we have to have an economy that works for all of us. And the only way we're going to close this extreme income inequality is to start with equal pay for equal work, create good union paying jobs. For us, we're fighting for a $15 minimum wage, that's the floor for us. And so when people look at me, they do see my difference. But what people also see is that when I have knocked on these doors, as we have been on our 100 county and 100 days tour, I have found people who look like me, people who don't look like me, but are going through the same struggles. Because regardless of how we look, how we look, we are all caught in the same rigged economy, Gene. We're all in Affected and impacted by a broken healthcare system, and we are all impacted by this climate crisis. And so, we are about bringing a coalition together who's going to start these conversations and put in the work to make sure that we can create a country and a state that works for all of us. So, if we're serious about delivering comprehensive change and um, these transformational policies, then we need to build this new co coalition and we need to knock on these doors. So, we're asking everybody. Please donate. Go to ericaforus.com or you can text join, J O I N, to 51550 and become a part of our moral movement. We are about creating the structural change that's going to make a difference in the lives of so many. Make sure you volunteer too, okay? People power is important. Yes. And Erica, it would be an unbelievable pleasure to see in the EU in the United States Senate with all the background and the qualifications that you have. Uh, to represent the people. Uh, thank you for joining us again, really appreciate it. Thank you, take care until next time. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.